guys, welcome to another episode of Anderson's TV. Today, we are very lucky to have the wonderful Rabir Massad in the house uh, because currently he is one of the only qualified human beings on planet Earth uh, that can talk about the neural quad cortex. I am, um, I think. That's what you heard for that little uh, intro that Rabir played. But come on then, Rabir, it, what is the 60 second, what does this do? And why is it different to other things? It's like, it's like the MacBook Pro of the guitar gear world, in my opinion. It does so much cool stuff. Um, firstly, anyone that's familiar with Kempers or Helixes or Axe Effects, it's very much the same kind of thing. It's a modeler, but it also captures devices, whether it be an amp or a pedal, distortion pedal, something like that. Um, what else can you do with it? Obviously, it's got a quad core, te uh, sorry, quad core processor in it. So uh, you, it's the most powerful modeler. So it means you can run, you could actually plug four instruments into that and run it live. So you could have three guitarists and a bass player pr plug into that and do a full set live with all their own stomp boxes and reverbs and everything going on, which is nuts. Has its own Wi-Fi, so you can tether it to your phone, download updates, you can send presets and captures you've made to your mates with the app they've got. It, it's just. It's kind of what everybody needed in mo in the modern day for modeling, I think. It's so so the in a nutshell, it's obviously a it's a, a portable uh, floorboard style mm. um, unit that will do amp and effects mm -hmm. modeling. For bass um, and guitar. Awesome. Uh, I think we'll go through some tones a little bit first. Rabir's had this for a few weeks and what you'll hear is a mix of um, Neural's own mm -hmm. um, cabinet emulations and effects, and also some ones that Rabir's captured in his studio at home. So let's see, let's just get onto that, and then then I'll, then we'll have a little noodle around with the UI because uh, that's kind of nice as well. I, you know, it's the anyway. icing on the cake, the UI for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Right here we go. So this is a preset I made, which is essentially a stereo rig. So as you can see, it's two amps running with two reverbs, delays, two cabs. Uh, this is how it sounds. <laughs> I should just say, if, if it's not already apparent, um, you're hearing the two XLR outputs here straight into our interface, and we are hearing it through a pair of studio monitors in the room. So mm -hmm. there are no guitar amplifiers currently involved. Yeah. Uh, what, um, let's just switch through them if we can. So here we go. So that is now stereo okay. cracking. Yes, with, with nothing the, else. Yeah. Probably the wrong sound for it. Oh. We could probably take off a bit of the EQ, because that was for a humbucker. <laughs> Oh man, uh, here we go, Strat Rock. <laughs> Heavy EVH, here we go. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I mean, it's. <laughs> um, we'll just finish on this before we go through more, and then we'll then we'll dive into some of the different user views and mm -hmm. perhaps some of the you know, some of the more interesting sides to the tech. Um, but yeah, give us a little noodle on the Strat demo one. <laughs> Good. Now, um, you were talking about, and this, this is something I think that guitar players may have experienced when playing around with, with digital um, amp modeling product. Mm -hmm. Tonally speaking, there's a point at which you start to go, okay, that's cool, that's in the ballpark, and, and uh, you know, if I was to record that, that would be a passable tone. And, yep. and I think you know, lots of brands have achieved that. But there's a feel thing that both of us were saying, normally it doesn't feel the same playing through a digital product as playing yeah. through the actual amp. But what, what was it about this that, that you know you felt perhaps had been another step forward towards that point where you just can't tell the difference anymore? I think in layman's terms, so in the other terms I, I really understand with this, it's that something about that sort of low mid 
uh, amp roar that happens. So you know when you play that and it just sounds girthy and powerful because it's coming out of a cab, obviously, and it gives you all that raw aggression. That does it really well, and it, it's done it much better than anything else that I've tried. You know, like I use the Helix all the time for, and I'm not trying to be like, this is the best, this is the best, but for that one tiny thing we're talking about, that feel thing, it gets the close, closest that I've personally experienced. Um, and then in the, from a scientific standpoint, it's something to do with the initial compression rate that happens when you dig into the string. Now, if we had someone from Neural here, they would explain it in scientific terms, but. I mean, I, I know when I played it, I was, I was playing a, a, just a note and I was just noticing that over the first maybe two seconds or whatever of the note, mm. the, 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 the tone and the feel of the amp kind of changes. Mm. It's almost inaudible to anybody but the player. Yeah. But you suddenly realize as you're playing those, you're going, that is what a real amp does. And I'm yeah. guessing that's all to do with, you know, tubes and dampening and speakers and transformers and bias and all kinds of stuff that, you know, but, I tend to, I think where digital processors have been previously is they mm. get the, they get the initial tone and the note right, but you kind of, almost like a digital delay. It's like, that's just the, yeah. the tone of, of the note. I'm not talking about decay they, as such. they emulate one feel of, of an infinite amount mm. of feels at an amp because it's real time, isn't it? It's really dependent on dynamic. Yeah. And I think with this, maybe their, their algorithm, what we you call it, is much more vast mm. in that sense. So you're getting many different feels I don't know. So don't look, know. let's dive into the, the UI. Um, okay. I mean, again, hopefully by now, all of you guys will know, you know, Neural aren't exactly new to the party here, no. you know, new to the party with a hardware device, but, you know, have been, uh, you know, one of the most highest esteemed kind of, you know, plug-in manufacturers of guitar amp yeah. uh, modeling for, for many years now. So let's look at the UI. So first and foremost, we're seeing this beautiful big color touchscreen. Um, and this has been done before, you know, it's a relatively accepted way, isn't it, of, of doing a signal path, but where it says in one, that's where the guitar goes in. We're hitting this green effects block here, which if I touch, shows you it's the compressor. Um, and we are then seeing the guitar split into two signals, which you don't have to do, but one, the top line goes through one amp and then some other effects blocks. And the second line goes to another amp and some other effects blocks. Mm. And actually you can see Rabir's got this panned hard stereo. So yeah. one comes out one speaker and one comes out the other. You can sum them back into mono if you want to, do whatever you want to do. Um, and I think I was quite liking the fact that as you pressed one, you see the, the buttons, the, the controls for that particular effect come up underneath. And then I've not seen this done before. Yeah. These switches, so cool. can you see that moving on the, the input signal here? Um, the switches not only are on and off switches, they're rotary switches as well. Tell yeah. me the story about the robot that smashes switches. So, so, <laughs> so yeah, basically, they, they, the reason I know this is because we have close friends at work with your DSP, actually, but, and they told us this, that when they were designing this and prototyping it, they had these switches, and they invented a robot that was basically just a hammer that was just banging the switch over and over again, it just left in a room, quiet, soundproof room, and they just keep coming back and checking on it to see if the, the integrity of the switch could handle touring and jumping on it. And, and yeah, it, it lasted like the, weeks. Yeah, weeks and weeks <laughs> of a hammer smashing it. So that's kind of yeah. cool. Um, I really, again, I'm, as you guys know, who followed this channel for a bit, I, um, if I get sucked into a digital unit and I'm struggling to, to make the changes I want to change, I very quickly lose yeah. um, interest and I sort of want to go back to it. And currently, again, Rabir hasn't, he's given me a kind of like a, I haven't, he hasn't really given me an instruction. I've just watched Rabir doing some stuff before and it's pretty intuitive. You know, you can start to see um, how you might change stuff, how you might save stuff, how you might switch different blocks on and off. I think the one thing that I only saw you do once, so you might have to do again mm -hmm. on here, you went to add a block in and I think you just, did you just touch the line? Yeah, so you... Uh, right, you touch the line where you want it to go and then you've got, okay, so various blocks here from, I, I don't know why you would, but you can put other amp modelers in. Yeah. Well, there you can see, I mean, I think these types of... And this list's going to be updated. Obviously, we've got a pre-release version here and they'll release a sort of release UI mm -hmm. with all the full list of all the devices they've got in there. We've got access to maybe 60% if that. The, the, the touchscreen is nice. I've, I'm trying to think what it was. I know um, 
I know the Poly Digit, very, very clever, uses a touchscreen as well, but it has a smaller touchscreen and you're kind of feeling sometimes like the end of your finger's yeah. not quite, you know, you're pressing something you didn't mean to press. And I know, I remember the head rush a few, like two or three yeah, years ago. Yeah, they had came one out, as well. And that was one where it's like you'd press it and it Apparently was like, they it updated didn't. the touchscreen recently with for all the new basically if you get what it's going to have an updated touch screen from what you would have seen at NAMM oh, right. but I just yeah. mean as in at, at the moment I haven't had to press anything twice to get it to yeah that's what I mean it's much more sensitive it is. to your touch so um, I don't really want to go too deep into things like reverbs and choruses and stuff like that just mm. you know I think when you've got the power of you know a, a, a quad core processor um, I think you just it's accepted, isn't it, that those types of effects are going to have the, the deepest, lushest, you know. And you can, well, tell me a little bit about, you were saying, because of the quad cortex, it can stack So the way it effects. works is each line, each lane represents one core of the processor. So if you're trying to, like this preset is a stereo rig, essentially. So I'm running an independent reverb and delay on each side. On one lane, it'd be like, no, nah, I can't do that. I can do one reverb. Whereas what the idea being that you utilize other lanes, cause, in order to allow the unit to handle it properly and efficiently. Awesome. So that's why I've split. I've got two reverbs and delays running on two separate cores of the processor. Let's do some more playing because yep. we talk a lot and then we'll come into maybe some of the other features on here. So let's move to some sounds that we've not heard you use yet. Yeah, there you go. So this is a capture of my Soldano SLO and VX100 in stereo. As a crunch sound. It feels great. It really feels good. Oh, and it man. does that thing I was on about, like that sort of beefiness that an amp has when you're just like, when you're going. You feel that punch that you'd get out of that cab, you know? I don't know what it is, but yeah, it's, I, you know, I always enjoy hearing you play. And I know you're, you know, you've, you've spent a lot of time with digital equipment and modeling and, and load boxes and all kinds of stuff over the last three or four years in your studio. So you always do a good job of kind of creating these sounds, but I, I can't help but sit here and go, <laughs> it just, it's a great amp tone. Yeah. It's all it is, just a great amp tone. What else we got here? Well, that, was, that was designed a clean tone around, uh, yeah, different. It's just, the, yeah, it's a big. Really, I designed it around a guitar that has its own boost in it, which is why it's oh, quiet. Okay. Um, that's the end of that bank. Well, let's make one. Why don't we just, okay. again, not yeah, necessarily crazy fast, but let's see if, uh, in fact, this is good. This is this is live and real. This is, can Lee work out how this works with, with minor guidance from, from Rabir? So I'm gonna press the plus, mm -hmm. and I guess the first kind of pedal is, I, I think I'm gonna choose an amp first and then put some pedals in front of the amplifier, if that's okay. So we've got some guitars and some bass amps. Now these I assume are all they're the not ones obviously out of the allowed box. to use the real name, but you can kind of work yeah. it out. But what I mean is these aren't ones that you've made, these no, are these ones are that are just gonna be in here anyway. So what have we got? It is worth saying as well with the quad cortex, you get I think it's something like nearly three hundred amp captures that they've made. Wow. Uh, and I think it's become super, super popular now. The, these will all be shareable, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you'll get people like Rabir and who knows, Michael Britt, I don't know, will start making their own and then selling those and you know, blah, blah, blah. So let's go with, uh, only because I just think it's a cool sounding amplifier. Let's go with a Friedman, or Freeman, as they call it here. Freeman, my favorite people at the NAMM show. <laughs> I such, thought the same thing when I saw it. Such good value when you get charged three hundred dollars to hang a poster up. Uh, oh, you, hey. need, you need a four-way, be a thousand quid. Anyone that's ever exhibited at the Nam show will know what I'm talking about. So now I press on the line, and I assume I need a cab to go with it. You do, otherwise it sounds like this. Oh no, don't do it. <laughs> um, okay, is it clever in the? Is it not right? So it doesn't suggest a cab to go with that 
Um, I've got to just choose one. Okay. Yeah. That was one of the things I always quite liked. I think Helix does where it's Oh, they suggest just, the cab for you. Yeah, it just kind of goes, if you choose an amp, here's a suggested one. You can change it, obviously. But So you'd obviously have to get reasonably familiar with what good, you know, what cabs sound good with what amplifiers. All the IRs and speaker IRs have been made by Adam Nolly Get Good. Have they? Yeah, every single one. So what's a good one to go with this? Save me trying. Well, it's to load a Friedman in it. So we want a British sort in of it. cab sound. In so. it. What have you been hanging in? It, mate. You've been hanging out on the streets of Brighton with all now the kids. Now the down at skate park, in it. <laughs> well, Travis. Sorry. So what? Am I, there are no Freeman cabs. <laughs> no, here, but so what the, am I it's doing? a British voice amp in it, really. Right. So you want to go with something like a G12 T75 or whatever. What you got there? GB75, 89, and then there's a this one. 75. Yeah, I guess. Okay, let's give it no a idea. Listen. See how it sounds straight out. And look, and then I, I presumably I can. Oh. I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm the interface is just so. I haven't pressed anything yet and gone, oh, I don't know where I am. I'm confused. Okay, so we've got two mics, obviously, if we yeah. want them on the you cab. Turn it Default on. is one, and then if I want the other one on, yep. I press that. You um, change the mic on the top there. Oh, yeah. That's pretty meaty. It sounds oh, great. Man. <laughs> I'm not, I haven't even done anything yet. Okay, so let's... Um, now, the reverbs, do they come after the speaker, or would you put them in between the I'd amp and the speaker? I'd put them in between the amp and speaker. Okay, so how do I make the Just space? Just drag it. Oh! I see. And then you can actually see the blocks that you can... Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So if I want to put uh, something in front as well. Mm -hmm. It's just not difficult, is it? Let's have... Let's just have some... A little bit of delay. Let's have a... Just a simple delay. A simple mono delay. Because I'm a simple mono lad. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> I mean, I could, obviously, you would tweak this yeah, to the point can... where you're just like, yeah, I really like that. But I mean, what's that? Like, less than five <laughs> minutes, and I've yeah. got a sound that I, that I like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I need some reverb as well. Reverb delay. Obviously, I'll put far too much reverb on because that's what I do. It's the best. Um, whole reverb. Oh, slightly too much there. Uh, where's mix. my mix? There we go. Oh no, that uh, far end, I think, there on the far right. Uh, is it that uh, one? No, no, that's type, so that you can scroll the types. Oh, I that see. Way. Oh, I see. Right. Well, that's okay. That's the first button I've pressed that's taken me somewhere I wasn't sure I was going to go, but I'm quickly back to where I was. I see. So. Now, not that I'm a big wah user or whatever, but I, you know, even I can work out there's no expression pedal built into this. So how many options have you got to add expression pedals? So when you plug one in, it calibrates it. It, it mm -hmm. recognizes you've put an expression pedal in and it works out the expression pedals range so that it optimizes against the yeah. wire and all the rest of it. So I think it's I think it's simply you just plug one in, I think. Is it just one? Or no, you've got, you two, got two two expression pedals. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I guess brands like Mission or whatever are making killer expression pedals and you can mm -hmm. check those out as well. Um, but what do I want to put? Maybe I'll just put a compressor on the front end. Here we go. Compressor, Opto Comp, Solid State, VCA, Legendary, Dual, Opto. Oh, that's a bit noisy, that one, isn't it? This to me, now, Rabir and I were talking about, you can hear the hiss, right? Well, I'll leave the hiss and I'll turn it down. So Rabir and I were talking about the hiss. I and like it's the like, hiss. yeah, Rabir likes it. And I, I don't like it as such, but I like... I expect the way to a, hear it. Yeah, but I like the way a noise gate... I, I would rather have the hiss than a noise yeah. gate that changes the tone. And I'm very much, I'm you know, as soon as you start playing, you don't hear the hiss. But I'm going to put a noise gate on a, uh, right at the end because, you know... It'll be under utility, I believe. Utility. Here yeah. we go. Oh, a little like 
Swiss Army penknife? Utility gate or adaptive gate? Let's go utility. You think so? No, I'm going to go adaptive. All right. Just because. So, so here we go. So let's see. How do we get this to work? Oh, I see. We've got... Right, so there you go. We've got quite a lot of background noise here. So the noise gate has to be up fairly hard to work, but it's working. Now, how does that, does it, do you hate it now? Can you turn it off then and see any feeling different? Right, so that to me feels almost like um, it's very much waiting for you to finish playing and then yeah. it's stopping the noise like a second <laughs> later. Yeah. So let's try a different one. Let's try I the other. I love when you can hear them doing that. Going, uh, how do I get back? Ah, change of ice now. I've pressed all buttons. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, press um, press the name of the button. No, I've got it. I've got okay. it. Okay, okay. Okay, so this is the utility gate. Let's see if this looks like I've got some much like more conventional. I like doing this. So you turn the range right up. So you're not. Are they? You're not duck. The range is so little. Yeah. Okay. So let's. That way, it's just. Funny, isn't it? It's, it's like a. <laughs> so if we do like. You want a more natural release to it. You'll hear more of a. Yeah, you'll so hear it's a... like a fade. Yeah, which is sort of more natural sounding, isn't it? <laughs> but look, I mean, I. <laughs> There's a tone. It took like five or ten minutes to, to, to put this tone in. I mean, and we've barely messed with it. It's just like yeah. you've loaded up the blocks and this is what we've got. <laughs> I mean, it feels great. Yeah, I, you know what? Noise gates, it's, it's like we're just going to ban the noise gate. Yeah, we just got rid of it. And so, if you want to get rid of that, yeah. you sort of exit that window and yeah. then just sort of click and drag it up to the top right where there'll be a bin. Oh, yeah, it's old Windows drag and drop into <laughs> yeah. the waste paper basket. Yeah. Yes, for the uh, Windows 98 user, which I'm still on. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, man. Okay. So, so do you want to save this? Ah, can do. I mean, it's, it's uh, no, I think to be honest, I'd. I, I'd rather almost just, is there anything else on this or, or are we kind of, do, do we feel like we've done enough here? I, I mean, mean I think it's worth showing people, for example, the fact that when you when we're talking about routing, you've got all your inputs listed on one side. So you can, you you've can got, input from USB. Yeah, you've got all your outputs listed on the other. And this is how we obviously rig things up to continue in row three or row four or rows three and four. You know, and then you've got your library with all your captures and presets oh, that you this can is, save to the cloud. Yeah, uh, Rabir, the one of the first things that Rabir did with this was he said, what's the Wi-Fi password here? So he's like, click, Wi-Fi. Immediately, it's like, it's updated. It's like all of Rabir's stuff that he's done when he's in Brighton is just here on it. I could tell like, it to my phone though with this. It's crazy, if right? If I'm away on traveling on tour or something and I'm in the venue and I need to get some presets from the cloud, just tether to my phone and I can get them. And what was the what was the thing you said, oh yeah, I may, if, if um, let's say I own one of these and you own one of mm -hmm. these and you did a sound, you went, I, I said, wicked sound. From the app, you just like click, oh, man. press, press my name so, and then I get a little message saying, oh, you want to try this new tone that Rabir sent you? I'm going to call this Lee. Oh, I can't imagine why. So check this. Okay. So this is what I was saying. I click Lee. And then I'll go to device directories and I'll see Lee is here. For me to now get this to Lee himself, I would click, drag up to copy to cloud. It copies to the cloud. So now I go to my cloud directory, presets, it's here. And I'd go share. And then Lee would pop up here. I'd click Lee or do it from my phone, from the device, from the app on your phone and go Lee. And he'd go, oh, please just send me a capture of this amplifier. Click store. It's in there and he can play within minutes. It's ridiculous. And that's with captures as well, like profile, like captures. How heavy is it as well? It's not that heavy, is it? I mean, it's, it's, it's massively smaller than something like a Helix, isn't it? Or a mm. Kemper Stage. I mean, I know it's got no expression pedals on it, but it's small. I mean, I it's just chucked the... it in my backpack, didn't I? I brought it up. What's on the back? Let's have a little look. So you've got um, two inputs. Mm -hmm. You're presumably using the, what have you got for, if you want to use? And they're, they're jack and XLR inputs. So you could plug a mic into this, you could plug because Hannah wanted to try oh, use it with her vocals. Headphones, effects loops, XLR outs, MIDI, mm -hmm. Express USB. Wow. I mean, it's it's just got tons of stuff in it. Anyway, look, I kind of feel that there's hopefully that that particular little video that we've just done is enough to whet your appetite. There's bound to be tons of other people using these on, on YouTube as well, I'm sure. I know Rabir's done some video on his channel. But 
Uh, the next video we're going to shoot, which I'm most excited to do, is we're going to do the blindfold capture. Yeah. A bit like the videos that I did with Rob back in the day with a Kemper, where it's like, can you tell which is the real amp and which is the Kemper? I'm well excited. So, yes. There you go. Thank you very much for being here. I hope you enjoyed that little um, overview of the new Neural Quad Cortex. Um, it should hit the shops right at the back end of 2020. Um, but I know they are heavily, heavily pre-sold with customers who've put orders in already. So um, what can I say? Jump in it. Find someone that uh, you can place an order with like Anderton's and just get in the queue, I guess. What um, do you, what do you, what's your initial impression now you've sat with it for 20? I know at NAM it's not, it's not a good well, place Na to Nam was Nam. a NAM was almost like half of me wishes they hadn't even launched it at NAM because it was like there was so much hype about yeah. it. And you plugged in and they had like one amp Yeah, model. it was hard to get overwhelmed yeah. at the time. Um, but. I, I mean, I, I, you, I think everyone will know that there's, there's, there is a part of me and lots of pe um, customers will relate to this. There is a part of me that just doesn't want to like this type of product mm -hmm. because I feel almost like, is it, is it just another nail in the coffin of traditional amps and there's also another part of me that says what it doesn't do that an amp still does is just that the excitement that mm. volume creates so maybe not. so that that's the sort of negative side of it the positive side of it is i don't think i've heard anything yet that i thought sounded more realistic than this and the feel of it i know you haven't seen me play but i was playing before we you know the feel of it is kind of frightening you know if, mm. if you get over the fact that you're hearing it through studio monitors so it's not quite mm. the air movement that a big amp would do yeah. but just the the feel of it and the realism of the feel is is frighteningly good you know i think the size of it is you know for the touring musician the fact that you know they've spent so much um effort road testing things like knobs and switches to just make sure it stands up to, to life on the road it's going to be tough to see um, it's a marker, isn't it? It's like, boom. Kem yeah. Kemper, I think, laid down the gauntlet, you know, 10 years ago with their technology. And it just feels like since then, nothing's I really feel like, knocked it off its perch, yeah, maybe. I know what you mean. And Particularly this, under that, the whole idea of capturing another amp, profiling yes. another amp, so. But this feels like it might be the new marker. I just think. like, right, everybody, catch up with this. Not only does it do those bits well, it's the other bells and whistles, I think, mm. make it for me. The icing on the cake, it's, the UI. It's uh, price-wise, I think it's going to be a little bit more money than something like a Kemper Stage or a, he a full Helix, but I don't think it's as expensive as some of the Axe FX products that are out there. Um, but yeah, check the links below. I'm not not even a million percent sure at the time we're shooting this video that there's an absolute, you know, it's pound, around shilling fifteen hundred ish, isn't is it? it? Something like that, yeah. thirteen fifteen hundred, um, something like that. But yeah, so so. Um, yeah, there you go. I'm I'm really really excited to do the the, the yeah. capture blindfold video because that that's that's where we'll know for sure what what we're you know what we're hearing. Anyway, look, thank you, Robert, for coming in. Thank you. Um, please, uh, yeah, like and subscribe. Um, and uh, if you press the old bell, you'll get the notification so you'll see when our capture video, you know, the blindfold against a real amp video comes up. Uh, yes, au revoir. Have a lovely day.